Hi there, today we're going to talk about the Amazon DSP scorecard. You know, there's a saying in business that if you really care about something, you should report on it. And that's exactly what Amazon does we uh, weekly to DSPs through the scorecard. So um, just as a reminder, Amazon contracts with independent service providers, independent delivery companies uh, called delivery service partners. And that's who actually delivers most of Amazon's packet packages. And most, most of the drivers actually work for one of these DSPs. And so to help these DSPs uh, perform better and up to the standards that Amazon wants, Amazon gives, or, yeah, gives a scorecard to DSPs every week. Usually I think it comes out on uh, Wednesday mornings, although Sometimes it's delayed. Sometimes um, there are. It comes out on another day. And one of one of the things that you learn when you follow the scorecard uh, over time is that it changes constantly. They're always adding more categories that they're tracking, or they're changing how they're tracking categories. And we'll talk about some of those today. So this this scorecard is for a DSP. Um, from week 21 of 2021, so a few weeks ago, and it's a representative of a, of a regular DSP scorecard. Now, um, the, you, there are different sections to the scorecard. There's the overall standing, and then there's kind of like the headlines of, of how the DSP did in each category like safety and compliance, reliability, quality, team, and there's um, and then there's driver current week performance. I've whited uh, blanked out the all the driver names on this report. And then there's the trailing six week performance, which is totals of or averages in, in some cases of the last six weeks for each driver on, on a DSP. And then there's also a uh, compliance or uh, preventative maintenance report page. So it shows the status of each van that the, um, that the DSP has and, and whether or not they're up to compliance and with their preventative maintenance. And then there's a big section of definitions and so if you have an actual PDF of the scorecard, you can click on these little bullet points and I'll open up another web page with uh, even a deeper dive on the metric definitions and how they're scored and how Amazon changes. So these, thing, these definitions change over time, but they haven't changed a whole lot in, um, in 2021. But there are some big changes coming and we'll talk about those. So let's talk first about the overall standing, which is um, kind of the headliner. So you can be ranked either fantastic plus or fantastic or great or fair or poor. And if you earn as a DSP fantastic or fantastic plus, then you get a bonus from Amazon. And that, that bonus is significant. And for many DSPs, it's the difference between just being a mediocre company, a, a mediocre business, or a successful business because there are significant bonuses based on getting a fantastic or a fantastic plus rating. You get more, uh, Amazon gives more money to DSPs for earning fantastic plus than they do fantastic. And if you only earn great, you don't get any bonus. So Amazon obviously pays DSPs on a per route basis and a per package basis, but um, if they if the DSP meets these metrics or meets uh, their overall standing is fantastic or fantastic plus they earn bonus money as well and that can be significant to the overall bottom line. Um, so there's the overall standings and then the different categories have have weighting. So the safety and compliance category is probably the most most 
heavily weighted category. Well, it is the most heavily weighted category. It has it accounts for 40% of the overall scorecard rating ranking uh, or score. Um, quality counts for 30% and team counts for 30%. Something that's coming is reliability, which is uh, which is basically the DSP's ability to supply to pick up all the routes that that they uh, promised Amazon if they have dropped routes and their reliability drops. And so Amazon is trying to figure out a way to make that uh, integrate that into the scorecard and that's that's why it's coming soon. They haven't done that yet, um, but it's supposed to be coming later this year. So safety and compliance, team and quality is accounts for the hundred percent of the score uh, right the way that it is right now. So let's just talk about the safety and compliance part, which I said is the accounts for forty percent. And some of these things, can really affect your scorecard rating. So safe driving is the FICO, the average FICO score of all your drivers. And if it's 800 or above, you get fantastic. And so in this, in this case, this DSP had 814, which, is, which earned them a fantastic score. In, in each of these categories, you can't earn a fantastic plus rating. It's, it only goes up to fantastic. Uh, in each of the individual categories. It's only in the overall standing that you can get Fantastic Plus. So safe driving metric, that, that comes from Mentor and the FICO score. And then seatbelt off rate, that's something that they implemented um, in the past year. And so 18 events per 100 trips. So 18 times this DSP had drivers not fasten their seatbelt properly and it was detected by um, by the system. So the when you fasten the seatbelt as a driver, there is a the system talks to the car system has a data integration with Mentor and with um, with Flex now. They there it used to be more Mentor, but they're changing they've changed it more to to be um, or they're changing it. I guess it probably depends on the DSP or the station that you're at, but it's been moving to, um, to being detected by Flex itself, the, the Flex the app. And then, so seatbelt off rate, that really can affect your score. That has a high impact, one of the highest impacts on the scorecard, as well as speeding. Um, so this DSP uh, earned a fantastic score because they only had five events per every hundred routes that they took. So that's a that's not very many events and so so as I understand it a speeding event can happen after you've been going more than five miles an hour over the speed limit for more than a block and obviously if you're on a busy highway or freeway that block happens pretty quick so that's something uh, they implemented this speeding event rate metric earlier this year or about a year ago and it took us a while to train the drivers to to um, to have fewer speeding events but now we have almost none so it's something that you can do you do not have to speed to be a good driver and that's what Amazon wants to and, and if you have a lot of speeding events this will really affect your scorecard uh, something to remember is that the safety and compliance score is a limiting factor on the on the overall standing. So if you have a great score in safety and compliance, you can't do any better than great on your overall score. That's how important it is to Amazon. So we really emphasize the, the safety scores, drive safely with, with your FICO score, and fasten your seatbelt, and don't speed. And those, those things are what affect it the most. So these these other three um, items in the scorecard are coming soon from Netrodyne. Netrodyne has not actually been implemented on the scorecard yet, but they have already implemented the systems in most stations. So that it um, detects, 
Netrodyne is a is a camera that sits right underneath the your rear view mirror, and it there's a there it looks forward and it looks at the driver. So it's it's looking forward for speeding sign speed limit signs and stop signs and stop lights and no U-turn signs. And so if there, for instance, if there's a no U-turn sign and then the driver makes a U-turn, you'll get a violation of that. Um, those are one, those are one, we should talk more, I should make another video just about Netrodyne, but there's uh, a whole bunch of things that it tracks. Uh, distractions, distractions is looking down or looking at your phone or touching the phone. So that can cause a distraction. And again, this rate is uh, on a per trip basis. And following distance rate is um, if you are following the vehicle in front of you less than 0.6 seconds away. So the, obviously the traffic, the, tr the speed of the traffic makes a difference. I think it's 0.6 seconds. If you're so, if you're if you're following closer than that, um, you will get a, a ding on the following distance rate. So again, I'll t I'll talk more about those as those get rolled out, and um, I'm, I could do a whole video on that. And then also is the uh, comprehensive part of the scorecard is the comprehensive audit. So um, this is the Working hours compliance, which is not working more more hours in, in a day than a, for a driver than your than Amazon wants you to, and some of these things differ by state or by city, and because each state has different laws about how much you can work each day, and so uh, each station is a little bit different on that. But your DSP knows how many hours you're supposed to work each day, and in fact. Amazon seems to have um, stiffened that a little bit because if we go beyond working hours compliance, we can't even deliver flex will stop and it'll say return to station. So, um, and then you'll end up having to bring back the package that you have left back to the station. On time compliance, um, on time PM compliance, so that's, again, that's a vehicle maintenance compliance. So um, if you're maintaining your vehicles, getting your oil change, fixing, fixing all the uh, routine maintenance on your vehicle, then you'll get 100% here. And DVR, DVCR compliance is something that's coming soon that they're putting more emphasis on. So DVCR is the, the, um, the vehicle inspection that you do in Flex. So when you begin, when you start your route, when you first log into Flex, you'll say, Flex will come up and say, inspect your vehicle. And so you'll scan the, the VIN number and, and go through the, it must be 20 pages of a, a vehicle inspection and you mark all those. Uh, and then you have to do it again at night. So if you have a blinker out that you notice during the day, then you can, you can mark that at night as uh, in your vehicle inspection. And that's something that I've noticed at our station that Amazon um, seems to care more and more about. I think because this is this is coming soon, so they're getting they're trying to get us ready for it by uh, talking about it a lot. Oops. So um, so the the next category we're going to talk about is reliability. I touched on this a little bit. Amazon is working to score, score DSPs on their reliability as, as providing drivers and picking up routes. So basically, if, if a DSP drops routes, then this capacity reliability score will go down. And it could affect the number of routes they're given uh, next week or next month over time if, if a DSP drops too many routes then they're going to lose routes. Amazon won't give them as many routes, and obviously they get DSPs get paid by the route, so that's going to really affect their income. 
and their profitability. So uh, the next section is team. So this is this is based on the six week rolling score for the drivers. So this DSP has a hundred percent, a hundred percent of their drivers were high performers, which meant which means great or fantastic rating. Um, if they only have if they have a fair rating or a poor rating uh, for six weeks, then that would affect this percentage. So you have high performance share, low performance share. All the drivers in this DSP were either great or fantastic. Attrition rate is the percentage of drivers who left this DSP in the last four weeks. It's an average of the last four weeks, so or a total of the last four weeks. So this is a hard job. Driving, driving for Amazon is a hard job, and it's not for everybody. So lots of times we'll hire somebody, uh, hire a new driver, and they'll, they'll go through the nursery routes for a couple weeks or, um, or work, for, work for us for a month or two, and they just realize it's not for them. It can be a physical job sometimes, and, um, and while, while most of our drivers like it, it's not for everybody. And so that's why we have, we have an attrition rate. And so 3% is fair. I think that 1% or below is, would, be, can, would earn you a fantastic rating. Now, customer delivery experience is a combination of these next two, customer escalation defect and customer delivery feedback. So customer escalation defects. So an a customer escalation is when a customer calls about something that the driver did, that either they weren't following instructions or they delivered to the wrong place or the driver did something that the customer was upset enough to call Amazon about. And these weigh really heavily in the scorecard. So if a customer is upset that, that you didn't leave the package at the back door and they had requested it in the notes and they're so upset that they actually call Amazon, then, this, then Amazon sends a, an email to the DSP about uh, detailing the defect and then the DSP has a week, I think it's a week, um, it might be two weeks to reply. So they'll, they'll talk to the driver. They'll do some research on their end. They'll look at the picture. Usually Amazon will also send a picture of the, of that the, if, if the DA, if the driver took a picture of the delivery, they'll send that with it. And as well as the description of the, from the customer, and then they'll compare notes with the driver and the DSP can respond. Oh, this shouldn't be a defect. Here's what really happened according to the driver. And then the Amazon will kind of, will look at both sides and go in and look at the GPS data and say, okay, we agree with the DSP. It's not really a defect and it won't count against you. Or, sorry, the driver didn't do what, what they were supposed to do and it does count against you. So even one defect in a week can really, can bring your score from fantastic plus to fantastic or even or if you have two or three it could be great so um, it's a it's something to really be careful of and the other part of this uh, customer delivery experience score is customer delivery feedback so I, sh I should also do a whole video on this but um, there is another report that comes out every Wednesday on customer delivery feedback so when a customer gets a delivery. They also, they usually will get an email that um, will say, how did we do? And was it great or was it not so great? And so if they say it was great, a thumbs up, and then they get to rank, you know, the, uh, the driver was um, delivered with care or, um, or there's several different categories that they can click on. But if it's not so great, they can choose driver was unprofessional or driver mishandled package or driver did not fall, did not deliver in desired location. I think that's the third one. But um, 
So it's it's somewhat subjective. This is a problem because um, especially the driver did not follow instructions. Well, did or what it is is driver did not deliver to preferred location. Well, did you did the customer tell us what the preferred location was and was the package that was not delivered to the preferred location, was that actually by an Amazon driver? Or was that by a UPS driver or a USPS or a US Postal Service worker or a Flex driver? So I think there's some real problems with this, um, with that particular metric. But the bottom line is it all comes, that feedback, they want to be obviously above 95% because this DSP only got 95% and or got 95%, which seems pretty high to me, but only got a fair. I think you can get a great if you get 97. If you get 99%, that's fantastic. So that's a, and that's really difficult to get, at least in our area. I should make an, another video about the feedback report because it's pretty interesting and, but there's some, and there's some problems with it that I'd like to talk about. Supposedly, Amazon is reviewing that whole customer delivery feedback report and they might change it in the future, but it's what we're stuck with for right now. So the next section of the, uh, of the scorecard is the quality. So these, these are the things that you would think that you would just naturally think that we would be scored on, which is, you know, are you delivering all the packages? That's delivery completion rate. Um, delivered and received is um, is a score of is a score based on how many how many times a, a customer reported not receiving a package or DNR, and and I'll show you some of those in a minute when we go through the driver score. But um, and then uh, basic you know work compliance things like photo on delivery. So did the driver take a usable photo when they took the photo? Did they, and then contact compliance is, did they contact the customer when they had the, when they were supposed to? So basically you have to contact the customer when, and that means text or call, whenever you mark a package as no safe location or unable to access. Um, and, and so if, if you mark a package as no safe location, but you don't call the customer, then you will, then that'll count against you on the scorecard. And you can see they, Amazon basically wants you to be 100%. So, scan compliance is the next category. And this, this is, uh, Amazon wants you to scan every package with the Flex app or the Rabbit at, um, at the location. So sometimes you make a mistake, you give, them, you give the package uh, to, to the customer and they walk inside the door or, or drive away with it or whatever and, and you forgot to scan the package. So that would, if you did not scan the package when you delivered it, then, then you would have to call driver support and they would scan it for you or they would enter a scan for you. And so they don't want to see um, they don't want that to happen very much, very often. You're protecting yourself when you're scanning the package. Attended delivery accuracy. This is something that they implemented you know, two, uh, a little while ago. Two years ago, drivers were taking a shortcut where they were just, they would go up to a house and they'd lay the package on the floor or on the, on the uh, porch. And, but they'd choose that they, from Flex, they would say that they gave it to the customer. Well, but they didn't really give it to the, to the customer. They, they just were too lazy to take a picture. They didn't want to take the time to take the picture. So Amazon started figuring this out because you could see how many deliveries you have, how many pictures you took. And then we had one driver, I remember. He's no longer with us, but I remember one, in a whole week he delivered like 1,200 packages and took 16 pictures. So obviously he was taking that shortcut. And this, this was a, a nationwide thing two years ago where a lot of drivers were doing this. So Amazon implemented this. They have a, based on, based on the area, they 
have an estimate of how many times you know you're going to actually give a give the package to a customer and how many times and if you don't give a package to the customer then you should take a picture and so that's what that's what this is um, and so you can see well we, we might have had one one incident I'll have to look at this we'll, we'll look at this later you can, I'll show you where this is it doesn't happen very often anymore for us so um, at the bottom of this first page is the recommended focus area so these are kind of computer generated it's basically on the things that you scored the lowest on will will end up on the on the top here and so every Wednesday like I said this report comes out and then the next two or three days after that your the DSP the Amazon representative for the DSPs will or the contact for the DSPs will meet with the DSP leadership and they will ask about these things and they will ask about other other um, other improvement areas that the that the DSP could work on so not only does Amazon give this scorecard every week but they also meet with the station leadership meets with the DSP leadership every week to discuss the scorecard and discuss any other things that are upcoming and that's kind of a um, and that's a scheduled that's scheduled on, on top of just other normal normal meetings that, and communications that they would have okay so let's talk about the driver performance so this is um, this is the current week DA means driver uh, delivery associate so the driver and I've whited out the names here of, of all the drivers and their um, and their weekly score so the columns so it number one it's it's ordered by the the number one driver here would be the one with the highest ranking based on the scorecard now the difference between being number one and number 59 might not be very high there might be very little difference uh, these all of these drivers had fantastic except for the last four or five had where they were rated great so we'll talk about what the differences are between being at the very top of the scorecard and being kind of in the middle and being at the bottom but in reality it's some very small differences. Everyone's really, really close together. So um, the second driver here, they delivered 1,140 packages for the week. And they don't even have a key focus area that, that the computer uh, tagged because they had an 850 perfect FICO score. They didn't have any seatbelt off rate, seatbelt off incidents. They didn't have any speeding. Um, we don't have uh, Netrodyne installed uh, by week 21 here at this DSP and uh, their delivery completion rate was <laughs> over a hundred percent I'm not sure how that happens um, they didn't have any did not receive DNR stands for did not receive so they had zero which mean which mean, made the DAR score 100 and uh, they took a hundred percent of their pictures were usable and they they actually they had zero customer contact opportunities which means that they didn't mark any packages this week as undeliverable um, except for business closed you can you can mark a package business closed and you don't have to contact the customer for it and it will not show that will not affect the, the scorecard now obviously there are many times when you're going to want to call a business customer especially like especially since COVID lots of times doors are locked and they don't want just anyone walking into the into the office so they'll have the door locked and and you may have to call them to get their attention they may may be in a back office or or something like that there's a lot of reasons to call a business but it if you don't call the business it doesn't affect your scorecard but it does it certainly does affect the scorecard if you mark a package as um, unable to access so if you can't get into a building or you can't get into a gated community you have to text or call 
the uh, the customer. And I made a, a video about the proper way to contact a customer. Um, you should look at that. And um, so unable to access and no safe location. You have to also text or call if, if you mark it as no safe location. So scan the package, mark it no safe location, and then the little pop-up window appears on Flex and you text or call or text and call. I, I recommend that you text first because a customer, you know, if the customer is like me, I don't answer unknown phone numbers. But if if you text first and say, hey, I'm the Amazon driver or, or there's a can message actually that you can just use and then your the customer is much more likely to pick up when you call. So that's what I do. Um, Amazon wants you to call or text every time you mark a package as no safe location or unable to access. So you can see this driver here had five opportunities and they did them um, they did them all, CC Ops, customer contact opportunities, and 100% in the um, SWC CC category. So uh, the, on the other hand, this driver had three opportunities, but a 66.7%, that means one of them they did not call, correct, did not contact. So maybe they didn't have access and were Sometimes you can be at a gate outside the outside the geofence and it won't let you um, text or call. So you have to text or call from the help menu instead of from the unable to deliver menu. Some drivers are just, you know, they just don't want to take the time to call. But Amazon wants you to call every time. So this driver here had 10 opportunities and... Uh, only eight of them did they actually call. And you can see that affects the score that the drivers with um, the drivers with the, who had the most con customer contact in red are the ones that closer to the bottom of the list of the scorecard. So let's talk about some of the other categories here. Um, SWC, SC, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to look at my notes here because I can't remember all of these all the time. That's the, okay, that's the scan compliance, sorry. Yeah, that's the scan compliance I was talking about. So you want to make sure that you're scanning all the packages. This driver did not. Um, this 54, ranked 54, he delivered... 677 of them and now and look at this SWC AD column so this is the attended delivery column and so he had one day where he did not where he marked too many packages as delivered to customer so you know if you he did it two days this number would be two so you th this is something that's very rare for us anyway, you see every other driver had zero. So they were taking, they were marking it and taking pictures, marking as, uh, they were not marking as delivered to customer too often. So that's what, that's what this is about. Um, DNR, I think I mentioned this before, DNR is the did not receive. So this driver had 1163 packages delivered and three DNRs so that's what knocked them you know even though they had an 815 FICO score and no other events um, there they had these three DNRs and they got a zero in DAR because these DNRs these did not receive occurred in an area where the crime rate was low. So if the crime rate is higher, like on this one, this 
Amazon takes into account the crime rate for, for each zip code that the delivery is made in. So if you're delivering to a zip code that has a higher crime rate, this DAR rate will be higher, with better. Um, and if you deliver to a zip code that has a low crime rate, then, and you have a DNR, then the DAR will be have a lower number, which is worse. So it's kind of a complicated, um, kind of a complicated calculation. And you can read more about that in the definitions on the back. But basically, the DNR outside of seatbelts and speeding, and your FICO score, what matters the most on your scorecard, what will knock you down the most on your scorecard, are did not receive. And that, then that's just natural. If the cus if the customer didn't receive the package, then obviously we're in the delivery business and and that should probably affect your scorecard more than anything. Um, the next one is, uh, this next to last column here is POD ops, so picture on delivery opportunities. So this is the number of times that you could have taken a picture or that you did take a picture and that corresponds to this SWC POD, picture on delivery category. So this driver took 429 pictures, 97.9% .9 of them were usable. So if you have a blurry picture, or if there's no package detected in the picture, or, um, or, if, the, or if it's too dark, like if you deliver at night and you don't use the little light, to light up the, the package, the camera won't see it. And the com basically what happens is Amazon runs a little computer program on every picture that you take and to see if there's a picture there, to see if it's blurry, and to see if there's a human in the picture. So they don't want uh, pictures of your feet. And sometimes even a, a picture of a customer's shoes that they left outside the door will cause will cause a bad picture um, score. So this is not a very heavily weighted score, but it, it, they have a, a separate report just for photo on delivery. So you can, you can see, and I'll, I'll do a separate video on that report as well, but you can see exactly what each driver is having problems with. And, my, and most drivers don't have any problems at all or very few. So, you know, a lot of drivers here are 100% or 99 or 98 or above, and all these drivers got fantastic scores. You have to be um, pretty careless to not have, or almost intentional to have a bad score here. So those are, I think I've covered all of the driver sections on the scorecard. So that was for the current week. And then, so there's also a section for the six week, the last six weeks. So it takes, Amazon takes the average or totals for the last six weeks and reports on them. So this first driver here, they had a fantastic rating, but they only, they're a new driver. Lots of times we see new drivers who don't deliver very many packages, have a, end up with a fantastic rating, but they, but those don't really count on your scorecard until you have more, four, four weeks history, then it'll start counting toward the overall team score. So the second driver here, they had six weeks, all six weeks were fantastic, and they're, and so they're rated as a high performer. And so it's all this, all the same categories. They're Average FICO score for the entire six weeks was 841. They must have had one speeding event um, that over that six weeks. And everything else is, is really high, you can see. Let's look at the, sometimes more, the, some of the more interesting ones are, are lower down. These, sometimes we have these, uh, a lot of these coming soons in the FICO and seatbelt and speeding. That's because rental cars, rental vans or uh, non-fleet vans do not report the same way into the system. 
um, into the fight for, into uh, mentor or into the uh, into the flex app. So if if a driver only drives rental vans or non-fleet vehicles, then you'll see this coming soon in the scorecard. So this we this driver here had five fantastics and one great week. Um, and some of these other drivers had like four and two, two and one. Um, it's interesting, this driver had six weeks as fantastic, but it was per, this is probably the this, this same driver that we saw earlier in the one week. They had two days of uh, where they missed, where they scored low on the, where they didn't have an attended delivery the way that Amazon wanted. So that affected their overall score on the six week. Um, so, it, so not doing that will affect your score. They also had a zero in DAR. So they had, I don't know how many they, how many DNRs this driver had, but you can go back and look and, and see all the DNRs that you have. And uh, the bottom driver, lots of times Amazon will quiz the DSP about their, their bottom performers and they'll have to explain why this driver was on the bottom of the scorecard and what you're doing to uh, improve their performance. So this this driver had one seatbelt off rate. This, this third from the bottom driver had um, not very good seatbelt off rate at all. Uh, this driver here, fourth from the bottom, had 2.5 speeding event rates for the entire six weeks, but that or, you know, he earned a, a red score. A, a score that's in red is poor, indicates poor. Here, here it is. Fantastic, great, fair, poor. And it's the poor things that will really drag your score down. So I think that uh, basically the six week performance scorecard, is, the six week section of the scorecard is, is about the same, is, yeah, is about the same as the one week. So it's, it's really just this one category that you can see a difference. So the next section of the scorecard is preventative maintenance. So I've whited out all the branded vans here, but um, Amazon very closely tracks the maintenance on all the vehicles, all the branded vehicles especially, and they will ins they inspect them. They also inspect our rental vehicles, but um, they, those do not appear on this report but all your branded vehicles will appear on this report. And if you don't have, if you're not keeping up with your uh, preventative maintenance, then that will drastically affect your scorecard too. And then the, ne the next section is uh, definition. So you should, if you, ever, if you haven't seen a scorecard from your DSP, you definitely should ask to see it. And, it, and it's best if you can get an actual PDF copy because if you click on these little bullets here, it will you click on them and it'll bring up really detailed information about each section. But here's kind of these are kind of an overview of all the all the definitions of their methodology and how they weight things, so you can see the weighting, um, how important everything is. So hopefully that that's a review of. Um, of the DSP scorecard and hopefully that helps you to understand how you can improve as a driver and become more valuable to your DSP. Again, if your DSP is not earning Fantastic or Fantastic Plus and they're losing out on money and some DSPs don't really seem to care but other, other DSPs do and I hope that you work for one that does. If you have any questions about the scorecard, feel free to leave them in the um, in the comments section below, or, or you can email me at mark at peakdeliverydriver.com, and I will do my best. But it's it'd be great if you could just ask them in in the comments section. That way, everyone else can see the answers too. And 
hope you're uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you.